So you want to know how to render a site plan in Photoshop because it is incredibly useful for showcasing your understanding of the site and the context. You can export a black and white site plan but a full color plan is going to make you stand out in the industry. Look closely because many architects are producing creative designs but all that hard work and effort gets lost in a boring site plan. Good news for us, rendering a site plan is quite simple and it doesn't require any fancy tools or Photoshop experience. This video will walk you through the entire process so let's get started. I'm starting with a blank document on Photoshop and this can be any size that you want, preferably a very large document with a 300 pixel resolution. I used Illustrator to adjust and refine my line weights but you don't have to use it and I'm linking it to my Photoshop file so that any changes I make to Illustrator will automatically update to Photoshop. And to do that, you can copy everything and paste it into Photoshop as a smart object. Or what I like to do is to make sure that it's completely linked, go into File and place it as linked. And you can click on your Illustrator file and then adjust the size of your drawing to fit your document. Now comes the fun process. Using the magic wand tool or shortcut W on your keyboard, I can select the individual shapes of the canal and then I can apply a blue color overlay. Next up is selecting the buildings and this would have been way quicker if you exported this on a separate layer. However, it only took me about a minute to select all of the buildings and then apply another color overlay in a whitish or gray color. And color overlays work just the same as layer masks. So if you wanted to add anything to that layer, if you click on this black box and then paint with white, it will add it onto the color overlay. And if you paint in black, it will delete it. Moving on to the buildings that I've designed, going to select them as well with the magic wand tool. And this time applying a pattern overlay because the roofs of these buildings are green roofs. This should already be installed in your Photoshop. If not, don't worry about it. I will show you how to add your own patterns into Photoshop later in the video. I'm going to add a white stroke to these buildings to represent the thickness of the walls. It's just a little bit more detailed than just grass. Adjust the settings of the stroke such as the size and the position. Lower the opacity of that layer to make sure it's aesthetic and pleasing to the eye. And now I'm going to select all of the other grass areas in the drawing because they make up a large percentage of the drawing so it's best to get it out of the way. And if you see me thinking about things or slowing down, it's because I'm comparing my drawing to a Google Earth to make sure that I select the correct shapes for the grass pattern. I had a lot of green spaces so I skipped that part because I'm just selecting them with the magic wand tool and then I'm adding the grass pattern and lowering its opacity. Next, select the main roads and apply an asphalt texture to them. And because the roads are kind of open-ended, they stretch out to fill out so many roads. I only want the pattern to focus on the areas around my master plan to bring the focus to it instead of away from it and on the context. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that if you paint with black, it will hide or delete things. So I'm going to paint using a black hard brush on these large open areas and then I can blend the edges later with a softer brush. And here is where I noticed that this grass texture shouldn't stretch all the way to here. So I tried to delete it using the black brush, but it was affecting the other grass areas of the drawing and it was difficult to get a really precise handle on it. But before I fix that, I'm going to blend the streets with a soft brush. Painting once again black in that black square or the mask. And this is where Illustrator comes into place, going to right click on the master plan layer and edit its content. It will automatically open my linked Illustrator file so I can see here that there is a gap. I can select the line and close the gap and then hit save. If I go back into my Photoshop file, you can see that it's already updating itself. I didn't even do anything. And if I look closely, the area is now closed. 
I can select it with the magic wand tool and then easily erase it from the pattern layer mask. And I think this is a perfect time to remind you that please make sure that you do subscribe so that I can make more videos just like this one. And now we're starting with adding detail to the floor plan, really the nitty gritty textures, patterns and effects that take your drawing from boring to amazing. Look at my tiny cute benches. There's just too much of them, so I'm gonna select them with the magic wand tool and hopefully I'm still 26 by the time I finish selecting them. And then we are going to apply a plywood or wooden pattern overlay. The scale of this doesn't really matter because they're just so tiny, but I'm going to add some drop shadow to make sure that it pops and highlights that these are benches and not some random rectangles on the side. And you can adjust the opacity, the size, the distance of the drop shadow to your preference. This path next to the canal is also wooden, so I'm gonna select it and apply the same pattern, however this time without the drop shadow. You can see here that I made a mistake when selecting the benches, I ended up selecting the stroke. So that's an easy fix, all you have to do is erase it from your pattern mask, select it again with the magic wand tool, this time don't select the stroke, and then paint with white. For this path here, I think I used the same pattern as the asphalt or the main road, but I'm only looking for some grain or texture so it didn't really matter and it wasn't a landscape project where I had to be really specific about the materials that I chose, so I didn't mind it really. And in some areas I went with just a color overlay which I think is perfectly fine because it complements all of the other colors as well and it's not an overload of textures. I have this thing where I put a darker color than I want and then I lower its opacity like that just doesn't make any sense please let me know if someone else does that. I forgot that these were benches as well so I had them with the plywood texture that had no drop shadow but then I erased it and added it to the layer with the drop shadow. I find painting in clipping mask so satisfying. It's like painting within the lines and it comes out perfect every single time. And I wanted these shapes to be metal so I looked through my textures and I found something that kind of looked like metal which I liked so I ended up using it. And now you know the basis of adding textures and materials but I'm going to show you now how to add your own textures and materials. I use Google pretty much to find seamless textures, I don't use any fancy websites to be honest. Found this one that I really liked, saved it as an image and then opened it in Photoshop. Make sure it's seamless and then go into edit, define pattern and that's basically it. Now you can use it as a pattern. I'm gonna speed it up right now just because it's really repetitive and I've shown you how to apply textures and materials. You can skip to this point if you want to move on to the next step. But if you do want to watch this in full version, normal speed, I will have this uploaded on my Patreon, so go check that out. And you can also download the Photoshop file and the Illustrator file on my Patreon if you're interested to follow along with me in this video. I decided to add a pattern to this water so that it's not just a plain color. So I'm adding this water ripple effect or pattern. For this elevated path, I wanted the shadow to be a bit more dramatic than the benches because it is significantly higher. So I created a different layer with the same pattern, but this time a bolder shadow. The site plan is coming together really nicely and now we're going to add the final touches starting with trees. Again, this is just from Google. 
download it as a PNG and then add it to Photoshop. When it comes to placing trees on your site plan, I want you to first add lines of trees instead of adding them randomly on your site plan. And this is where your Photoshop might get a bit slow because these are all added as smart objects. So I am going to rasterize every three together, merge them, and that will also save me time when I'm placing them. I am merging these six trees together so that I can place them much quicker on the plan. You can see how quickly it is to add trees in this method. And then if your path or your street isn't exactly straight, press Ctrl T on your keyboard and then you can rotate them and size them accordingly. Now that I have these strong lines in the master plan, I can lower its opacity and start changing every individual tree a little bit just to make it seem a bit more natural. And I can do that by selecting the tree using the rectangular selection tool and then rotating it or adjusting its size using Ctrl T to transform. And once that's done, I can then start adding individual trees here and there. Some are bigger, some are smaller on the main points of entry in the plan. Go with either one or two or three trees. That looks the best. And if it's more than one tree, mix up the scales. I'm going to merge all of them together and then add a clipping mask because I'm going to paint using a very soft brush over some of the trees again to add a little bit of difference and to make it seem like these trees are various heights. And make sure that your brush isn't at a 100 opacity for this. I'm adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer to the trees because I wanted to make them warmer since there's a lot of green in the plan. And if you press alt and click in between those layers, the adjustment layer will only affect the layer directly under it instead of affecting all of the layers under it. And the background seemed a little too white so I colored it using the paint bucket to a very light grey, almost whitish color, but darker than the buildings. This curved line here is a train line that used to lead to a train station but it's not in use anymore so I don't think I should add it in the plan. So I've decided to erase it and replace it with grass. And I hope that you can see throughout my videos is that I'm not trying to show you that when I'm creating these drawings that it's all perfect and the process is a straight line because actually it takes a few tries to get it to the look or the style that I want and that's perfectly fine. The important thing is you shouldn't compare your work to the work you see online. I'm going to delete those lines from the illustrator file and you can use the direct selection tool to select the line and then delete it which is shortcut A and then update that into my Photoshop to make sure that the plan is very clean and seamless. I also uploaded a while ago a video about the top tips that architects must know in Illustrator so if you haven't watched that yet I'll have it linked in the cards and it will show you how to use Illustrator as a beginner and I'm so happy and grateful for all of the great feedback that I received on that video so thank you so much if you have watched it. As for the grass texture I wanted to increase the scale so that you can see the texture from far away. All that's left to do is press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to stamp all of the layers together, right click and convert that into a smart object. Go into camera filter and this is where you can really fine tune your drawings in terms of colors, exposure, brightness, contrast and all of that. You can see the settings that I go for. And one of my favorites is that if you click on this FX, you can add a little bit of grain to your drawing. And if you zoom in, you can see that the areas that are just color overlay, now it has a little bit of grain and texture so they don't look flat. But don't go too overboard with this because if you do, it can look pixelated and that's not our intention at all. You can also go to a color lookup and add another filter if you wanted to really switch up the colors. 
I really like this soft warm filter but of course pick one that you like or maybe don't even add one because colors you chose are already perfect. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below what would you like to see from me next. I'm Rasha Shururu and I will see you next time.